Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to session 6 of our course on training and development. Today in this lecture, we will delve into the realms of understanding the importance of evaluating the training outcomes. We will try to touch upon various assessment methods for evaluating the training and we will also be focusing upon using feedback for continuous improvement. So, let us get started. So, feedback and evaluation are some of the important constituents and components of training for the various reasons. Number one, improvement. So, when we talk about improvement, so it is the feedback which provides us with the insights into the performance. So, our insights about the performance of uh, the individual can be gained by means of the feedback mechanism which would further help us in highlighting the areas of our strengths weaknesses and would further help us in understanding what are the areas that really need improvement. So, definitely this plays a very vital role in the training. Then is motivation. So, positive feedback reinforces good performance and boosts morale, motivating the employees and trainees to continuously strive for excellence. So, motivation is one of the important elements and definitely when they get to know about some constructive feedback about their performance, they are, their morale is boosted and they are motivated enough to perform better. Next is accountability. So, evaluation helps establish accountability by setting clear performance standards and assessing whether the trainees are performing as per the standards or not. So, definitely that uh, you know gap can be bridged by means of feedback mechanism that we have into play. There is about identification of gaps. Through evaluation, the trainers can identify the gaps in knowledge, the skills, etc. and can further figure out what can be done in order to further improve the gap areas. Then is about adaptation. So, feedback and evaluation enable trainers to adapt their training methods and materials based on the needs and preferences of the trainees. By soliciting feedback on the trainee experience, trainees and trainers can both make adjustments to optimize the learning outcomes and enhance the overall effectiveness of the training interventions which are used. So, certainly adaptation is one of the major uh, reason for feedback and evaluation to be the essential components of training. By means of feedback and constant evaluation, one can very well get to know about the quality standards and quality assurance can further be enhanced by means of feedback and evaluation. Then of course, Continuous learning is something that happens as a consequence of the feedback and evaluation mechanisms. So, in nutshell, we may say feedback and evaluation are one of the most important integral components of training that support improvement, motivation, accountability, gap identification, adaptation, quality assurance, so on and so forth. So, now let us get to learn something about the importance of uh, evaluating the training outcomes. So, the importance of training outcomes lie in their ability to assess the effectiveness. Evaluation helps us in determining whether the training achieved its intended goals and objectives. So, right at the time when the objectives are framed, the various standards are set and towards the evaluation, we get to know about the fact that if the training was successful enough in you know highlighting the areas and was successful enough in actually 
achieving the objectives or not. So it helps in providing the insight into whether employees have acquired the necessary skills, knowledge, abilities which are required to perform their roles in an effective fashion. By means of evaluating the training outcomes, the organizations can very well identify the areas of strengths and weaknesses in their training programs. And further, the necessary action may be taken to work towards those areas which need attention. Then it's about informing the decision making. So training evaluation uh, provides data driven insights that inform decision making and uh, would further, further help us in uh, accomplishing the various objectives. So certainly it has a very, very vital role to play. So informed decision making uh, is something that can be gained by means of it. Evaluation provides data driven insights which inform decision making processes related to training strategies, resource allocation and program improvement. It helps organization make informed choices about future training objectives and future training initiatives also. Now let me apprise you of uh, some of the things which are very, very instrumental in uh, you know, evaluating the training outcomes. Many a times quantification of the tra training outcomes is done and at times it is done in a qualitative fashion also. So both the evaluations finally contribute towards making the informed decisions for the organization. Then is importance of evaluating the training outcomes. Now when it comes to importance of evaluating the training outcome, we have demonstrating return on investment. So evaluation allows organization to demonstrate the ROI. By ROI we mean return on investment of the training investment. Training is considered to be an investment, which means that you know it will definitely yield us return. You have to put some amount into it, you have to invest some amount into it and definitely the return would come. So by measuring the impact of training on certain KPIs, that is the key performance indicators such as productivity, employee satisfaction, customer satisfaction, organization, depending upon uh, what is the, uh, you know, what is the, so depending upon uh, what is the objective of the training, uh, what did it actually intend to uh, boost, did it intend to boost the productivity of the concern, the customer satisfaction of the concern, the, uh, the employee satisfaction level, so on and so forth. So organizations can justify the resources allocated to training and development by justifying further the investment. So definitely uh, you can expect a lot of uh, return on investment on the key areas that are uh, required. Then it's about driving continuous improvement. Through evaluation, organizations can continuously, you know, refine the training programs. So they analyze the feedback from the trainees and the other stakeholders. They identify the areas of improvement and finally implement the changes accordingly. So organizations can this way ensure that the training uh, initiatives remain relevant and also effective over time. Then it's about supporting the organizational goals. So the evaluation helps in alignment of training outcomes with the organizational goals and strategic priorities. So the training outcomes have to be aligned well with the strategic objectives of the organization, the strategic intent of the organization. So we always have to ensure that there is a tandem between the, these two things or uh, the training outcomes are in tandem with the organizational goals and strategic priorities. Then it's about enhancing the accountability. So evaluation holds stakeholders accountable for the outcomes of training program. It provides a mechanism for assessing the performance of trainers, instructors, trainees and ensures that individuals are held responsible for their roles in the training pro process. So when we talk about the entire training process, there are multiple stakeholders involved in the entire training program. For example, we have instructors, trainers, trainees and several other parties, the training designer also. So by means of uh, this evaluation, we can get to know about the various aspects and various stakeholders of the training program. And we can also ensure that individuals are held responsible for their roles in the entire training process by means of it. 
Then we have promote stakeholder engagement. Evaluation encourages stakeholder involvement in the entire training process. By soliciting the feedback from the respective parties, uh, from various stakeholders, including the training, trainers, managers, senior leaders, organizations, you know, they can ensure the training program meet the needs and expect expectations of all the parties which are involved in the process. So this was about a little bit of background regarding why is training and feedback, training feedback and evaluation important. Next we delve into some of the very, very concrete methods of evaluating the training. So in the subsequent slides, we would get to know about the various quantitative as well as the qualitative methods of measuring the training effectiveness. And the methods that we are going to uh, deal with have been put with examples also to understand how things happen and how in real setting the training evaluation takes place. So let us get started with the very first method and a very basic one which is called as pre and post tests. So when we talk about this pre and post test method, it is very much implied from the name itself that some score is computed before the actual training and some score is computed after the training. And the idea is to gauge the difference which happens or which arises after the training was imparted to the uh, individuals or the trainees. So it is a very, very simple method wherein some, it is a very, very simple method in which the individuals are assessed before the training is imparted to them, wherein their current knowledge, their current skill level is assessed right before the training is imparted to them. Then after that, the training interventions happen, the interventions take place, they are uh, then given the training in an adequate fashion and then soon after the training happens or after some period of time, their training uh, in order to check that whether the training was effective or not, their scores are com computed and their, uh, you know, their assessment is done after the training also. So very clearly one can get to know about the pre-training and post-training assessments. And this is one method which can be used in many settings to understand the immediate effect that happens clearly after the training. It is a method of quantifying uh, the pre and post assessments of the training processes. So pre-test assess trainees knowledge and skills before the training begins while the post test assess the same variables after the training is completed. Now the question which arises is how can we do that and what can be the various uh, methods which can be uh, useful for assessing the you know conducting such kind of pre and post tests. There can be simple methods uh, which describe the data which can help us in understanding the pre and post test. Moreover, we have something called as paired t test which can also be used for assessing such kind of training methods. So we have paired t tests and when we are conducting the paired t tests, the certain conditions are supposed to be met and uh, we have to be very, very careful and watchful about our uh, data sample, who we are assessing, how we are assessing and uh, what kind of test are we going to make use of. So today uh, in this session, we are going to deal with several such methods. So this is about pair t test. Let us move to the second one that is called as surveys and questionnaires. So there are certain surveys and questionnaires which collect feedback from trainees, instructors and stakeholders about various aspects of training program. So normally uh, the kind of questions which are asked during those surveys and question, you know uh, interviews and surveys and questionnaires, they can include Likert scale questionnaire. Now the question which arises is what is Likert scale questionnaire? So usually it is a kind of interval scale on which the individual is asked question based on certain items, based on certain preset statements and the individual is asked to assess or rate each and every statement which is given to them 
on a scale of 1 to 5 or maybe 1, 1 to 7 or 1 to 9, whatever the case may be. So, they may be asked the questions on Likert scale, they may be asked to do some kind of uh, answering on open ended kind of questions and uh, they may even be asked to rate the scales to gather the qualitative and quantitative state uh, data. So, basically this can be one of the uh, methods for assessing the individual. Again, it can be uh, assessed in a very quantitative fashion by making use of several tests and by making use of several methods. So, Likert scale are commonly used at times make use of some kind of standardized questionnaires also. So, standardized questionnaires are the ones which are already the established one. We just have to go ahead with some kind of validity check and reliability check of the questionnaire and the instruments that we have and then we can further think on the lines of doing some kind of analysis on such kind of questionnaires. Next is observation. So, one of the methods which can be used for uh, evaluating could be observation methods also. So, when it comes to observation method, it includes direct observation wherein the uh, trainers or ev evaluators are directly observing the trainee's behavior during the training session or on the job performance to assess the skill application, whether they are adhering to the processes or not and also to check their competency levels. So, observations can provide very, very valuable insights into the trainee's behavior and uh, very instantly we can get to know about the effectiveness of the training. And uh, definitely it helps us in gaining insight in the trainee behavior and performance in the real world context. So, this is one method which can be used for training evaluation. Next, we have something called as performance appraisal. So, the ultimate idea of training is to improve the performance of individual at work. And performance appraisal or performance evaluation is about assessing the performance of an individual with respect to the job he is performing. Now, performance appraisal happens in several fashions. We have different methods for appraising the performance of the individuals or assessing the performance of the individuals. We take into consideration uh, several methods. To name a few methods, uh, I would like to highlight something about 360 degree feedback approach. There is something called as 360 degree feedback approach. We have something called as management by objectives which can be used which is also called as MBO. So, we can have uh, behaviorally anchored rating scales. so on and so forth. So, we have multiple methods which can be used for assessing the training of the individual uh, effectiveness of the individuals and one of the methods is performance appraisal wherein we just try to check the performance of an individual or we try to assess the performance of an individual on certain parameters and there are certain key performance indicators which are taken into consideration such as productivity, quality, customer satisfaction and then we take the uh, you know, then we assess their performance on certain uh, different parameters and uh, we get to know about the areas of their discrepancy and areas which really need a lot of attention. So, this was about our third method of training evaluation. Then we have uh, several other methods which can be used. For example, we may go for something called as focus groups. So, when we talk about focus groups, it is something related to bringing together a group of trainees, a small group of trainees to discuss their uh, experiences, perceptions, opinions about the training program. Facilitators guide discussions around specific topics, allowing in depth, allowing in depth exploration of the training, training perspectives and insights. So, focus groups are also commonly used by many of the organizations to uh, understand that whether the training was effective or not, because it will help them know about the uh, experiences, perceptions and opinions about the training programs which will further give, give them an insight into improving the training program if required and will also help us in sensing about what is the perception of people towards the training program. So, this way multiple stakeholders can be helped using focus group interviews. So, next we have uh, something called as interview method. So, when we talk about interview method, 
Interviews with the trainers, trainees, supervisors, stakeholders can provide a lot of qualitative data about the effectiveness of the training program. So interviews can be an excellent method wherein some kind of structured or semi-structured interviews may be taken. So semi-structured interviews would mean that some part of the questions are already structured and as and when the interview begins, the uh, questions can be modified as per the requirement. And as and when required, we can definitely ask the people about uh, what they are looking for. right? And interviews with trainees, trainers, supervisors can provide a lot of qualitative data about the effectiveness of the training program. And we may use uh, semi-structured, structured form of questions to probe the people more about you know, the detailed feedback and suggestions for improvement. Next we have the evaluation forms and checklists. So evaluation forms and checklists provide a very, very structured framework for assessing various aspects of the training program. We may have some kind of structural uh, instructional methods, learning materials, we may have some kind of uh, questions and checklists related to facilities, logistics, whether people were happy or not, whether the temperature was adequate during the training program or not, whether the seating was comfortable to them or not, whether the instructional methods were adequate or not, whether they would uh, they were able to learn something uh, from the learning material and the handouts which were provided to them or not. And also, you know, it helps observers to document their observations and assessments. So a checklist may be prepared, a good survey can be prepared to be given to the people and then we can just check that whether the training was effective or not. Next we have follow up surveys. So follow up surveys are conducted weeks or months after the training to assess the long term impact. Follow up surveys are conducted weeks or months after the training to assess the long term impact. See from the trainee reaction we can certainly get to know about his immediate reaction but whether the things that have been learned by the individual during the training program, have they been put into practice by the individuals or not or did they have a long term impact or not could only be assessed by means of follow up surveys. So these are usually meant to assess the impact of the training in the long run and definitely it helps in understanding that whether the knowledge was retained or not, whether the skills that they acquired during the training program were you know. Uh, retained or not during the training program. So these surveys measure whether the trainees are applying what they have learned or not and also it helps an, uh, us in understanding whether the things that were told to them or the you know learnings which they uh, had during the training program have they been put into practice or not. Next is cost benefit analysis. So it is again a very quantitative method of understanding the cost benefit analysis. It evaluates the financial cost of implementing a training program against the benefits of return generated. So there are certain KPIs which are set, there are certain key performance indicators in the form of learning outcomes which are set in the beginning itself and uh, all the things that the organization aims to achieve by means of training program in terms of productivity, in terms of improved performance, in terms of other measurable outcomes, they are all you know set and they are all listed well in advance and towards the end it is evaluated that whether the amount which was spent towards training was worth spending uh, in terms of gaining the outcomes in form of increased performance, productivity, measurable outcomes, so on and so forth. So this was about our uh, next method of evaluation. So we may have multiple methods and there can be several methods of evaluating the training performance. So it is not just about evaluating the performance of an individual merely on the basis of uh, the quantitative data or qualitative data, there can be several methods, there can be blend of methods which can be used ranging from the interview methods, survey methods, pre and post tests, quantitative analysis, T test, then uh, surveys, checklists, questionnaires focus groups, etc. Now we move to some more important and more uh, widely accepted methods of evaluation. So we will try to touch upon as, as many methods as possible in today's uh, session which are meant for evaluating the training. So 
usually the organization can make use of blend of methods they can use these methods and isolations which we just dealt with and now it's time to understand about some of the concrete frameworks for evaluating the training now uh, let's get started with the first method which is called as the Kirkpatrick's four levels of evaluation now when we talk about Kirkpatrick's four levels of evaluation uh, let me first give you a little background about it. It is a method which was developed by Donald Kirkpatrick and this framework consists of different levels. Now what are these levels? We will try to understand each one of them in detail and we will try to uh, gauge into the nuances associated with each of the levels of training. So they say that uh, Donald Kirk Kirkpatrick developed this framework and he said the level 1 of the framework is reaction. So level 1 evaluates the participants reaction to the training. So what does it mean? It means it tries to capture several aspects related to the satisfaction level of the trainees, the engagement level of the trainees and perceived relevance of training. So at the first level, you know, the satisfaction level of trainees may be assessed. You may get to know about the fact that whether people were engaged, did they feel engaged in the training program or not. And also you can get to know about the perceived relevance of training. So there can be various methods which can be employed to understand uh, these kinds of mechanisms. Now, what can be the various examples of level 1 eval of uh, you know reaction evaluation? So, we will just quickly take a look at the various questions which may be asked or maybe the various examples uh, of such kind of evaluation. Now, some of the examples of level 1 evaluation questions can include did the participants uh, sorry did the participants find the training concept engaging and relevant, were the material well presented and were they easy to understand, did the participant feel that the time was well spent during the training program, did they actually feel very actively engaged during the training program or not. So there can be several examples uh, for it and uh, one of the examples which I would like to highlight would be an example. Uh, wherein after completing a leadership development program, so there was this leadership development program which was uh, uh, imparted to the people, participants are asked to rate the training session on a scale of 1 to 5, wherein 1 meant you know they were not very satisfied, 2 meant they were moderately satisfied, then uh, 3 meant maybe neutral then they were satisfied for 4 and 5 meant they were highly satisfied. So they were majority of the participants provided ratings uh, for this on a scale of 4 or higher and it indicated that they, they had positive instant reaction toward the training. So such kind of questions may be asked every now and then and we can get to know about the engagement level of uh, people and we can get, get to know about several other aspects related to reaction of an individual in the first go itself. So the first, the second level is about learning. Now here what we have to do is we have to assess the extent to which the participation past participants have acquired new knowledge or skills. So it focuses on measuring the learning outcomes and can involve pre and post training assessments, the quizzes, the tests or skill demonstration. Now there can be several examples of uh, level 2 evaluation methods like for example we may have pre post evaluation we may have some kind of skill based assessments for the people we may have even something called as performance evaluation conducted by supervisor or trainers directly so uh, these can be the various ploys which can be used for assessing the learning because the ultimate aim is to understand that whether they have acquired something or not. 
as against the first step wherein the reaction was sensed that whether they were finding it all interesting or not, whether it was engaging or not, whether it was relevant to the context or not. In the second level what we try to uh, get to know about an individual is the fact that whether an individual was able to learn something as the outcome for the training program or not. So in this sense we try to assess the effectiveness of the training program. And uh, there can be several uh, methods which can be employed like for example we can go for skill assessment, we can go for uh, value assessments of the individuals, we can get to know about uh, pre and post training knowledge testing sessions for the individuals because the ultimate aim is to even make the individuals learn something of the training program which is given to them. Now uh, another example in this context could be a sales training program. Now the sales training program. It may include pre-training assessments on the product knowledge and the sales techniques and after completing the training program we may assess the knowledge level of an individual as, as in how much have they been able to learn about the product as a consequence of training and have their sales uh, technique skills improved as a consequence of training or not. So we can use multiple uh, systems and we can use multiple exercises to assess them on various things. It can be a pen and paper test also, it can be role playing exercises, it can be simulation based exercises and we may even go for self assessments of the individuals. So this is about the second aspects, aspect of uh, the second level of uh, Kirkpatrick's model called as learning. Now at level 3 it is important for us to evaluate the change in behavior as a result of training. So ultimately the behavioral change has to happen as a consequence of training. So ultimately uh, what sorry at this stage what we are doing is we are trying to evaluate that whether the changes in participants behavior or performance on the job has actually happened or not. So evaluation methods may include observation at work performance reviews, self assessments etc. And you may include whole host of questions like are the participants applying the applying the new skills learnt or not. This can be one of the questions. Then are there some observable changes in the participants behavior as a consequence of training or not because it is a general tendency that an individual learns something or the other at some training program or the other but then after he resumes his work he tends to move back to his previous practices. So there has to be a solid reinforcement for ensuring that the behavioral change happens and this is only going to be possible if we are going to constantly reinforce it and we are just trying to keep a check on the behavioral change mechanism of an individual. So this was about the third level of our evaluation method, uh, evaluation model, last is your result. So when we talk about fourth level, it measures the overall impact of the training on organizational goals and outcomes. It focuses on assessing the tangible benefits of the uh, training program in terms of the return on investment. So there can be various examples of level 4 evaluation metrics which, which may include increase in the customer satisfaction level. It may be increase in the sales revenue that is generated as a consequence of training. Then there can be reduction in the employee turnover rate, right. So multiple ways can be there to assess if the individuals are actually showing some kind of result oriented uh, change or not. So this was about the four levels of evaluation. We may uh, talk about the example in this contest again. So after implementing a leadership program, uh, an organization observes an increase in employee engagement score. They were able to see that there was a higher retention rate and the customer satisfaction also improved and also there was some kind of uh, team performance uh, review which was taken by means of which it, it was assessed that you know the team performance of an individual also was impacted because of the training that was imparted to them. So it all uh, you know all together it led to uh, contribute towards organizational growth and success. 
So, this was about Kirkpatrick's four levels of evaluation. Now, in summary, this is a very comprehensive framework for uh, assessing the effectiveness of training programs. Uh, from participants reaction and learning outcomes to changes in behavior and finally, the organizational results. So, by evaluating the trainings, uh, training at different levels, organizations can gain variable, uh, va various you know valuable insights into the impact of their training initiatives and make some data driven decisions because everything can be quantified here. So, when I, when I talk about uh, understanding the employee engagement level, it is not just a qualitative phenomena, it can be quantified. We may use some kind of standardized scales to understand that whether some kind of uh, quantified uh, you know improvement happened in the employee engagement levels or not. We may use some kind of standardized scales to assess the level of satisfaction among the employees. So, all these things can be quantified and we can get very good you know uh, data driven insights to make some meaningful decisions in future also. So, this was about Kirk Patrick's four levels of evaluation. Now, we move to the next uh, you know improvement levels or say uh, this was uh, Jack Phillip who came up with the ROI methodology and he finally said that the framework expands on I mean he finally said that it has to be fifth level also. So, the fourth level of Kirkpatrick model was primarily focusing upon the results. Here he said that return on investment is an important aspect and we need to calculate the financial return generated by training complete compared to its cost. So, uh, this has to be done in the fifth level and uh, this was contributed by Phillips uh, ROI methodology that is Phillips return on investment methodology. We have several other methods like for example, we may have uh, CIRO method, we, has, we have uh, CIPP methods and we have several other methods which can be used for evaluating the training. So, let us begin with the next method called as CIRO method. So, here C stands for context, I for input, R for reaction and O for outcome. So, this model considers various aspects of training environment and its outcome and its outcomes. So, we will uh, talk about it in detail, uh, but for now we will just talk about the various elements of CIRO method, then I would try to demonstrate it with the help of some examples, which would further make it clear as in how CIRO method can be used in practical settings. So, when we talk about CIRO method, here context refers to evaluating the organizational context and training needs. So, context what does it mean? Includes several things like for example, it includes that if there is some kind of leadership support or not. If there was some kind of leadership support for imparting the training or not, then if the resources were available or not, what is the organizational context? What are the industry trends. So, all these things are supposed to be seen as a part of the context. Then is about understanding the uh, context well. Uh, it is important to understand the context because it shapes the design, delivery and effectiveness of the tra training program. So, if you are if for example, there is a training which is to be conducted in uh, say international settings or uh, if the training is to be imparted in domestic settings. So, it is important for us to understand the context first, so that it helps in better delivery of the training, it helps in designing the entire set of training program in a good manner and this will certainly help us in enhancing the quality of a training. So, basically it is about uh, context and next we move to input. So, when we talk about input, input is about the design and delivery. It is about the training materials used, what is the quality of training material used in the training program, how was it delivered, what method of delivery was chosen to deliver the training program and uh, how well was it executed, right. So, well designed training materials, interactive act activities and uh, several experienced trainers contribute to the success of the training program. So, inputs have to be made very, very clear. We need to be very wise in understanding what kind of input goes, what kind of training material is going to be given to the individuals, what method of 
training delivery is going to be used, whether it's going to be a blended mode of uh, training, whether it's going to be a uh, on the job kind of training that you're going to give to the individuals, whether it's going to be an experience, experiential training that is going to be given to the individual, whether it includes some kind of hands-on uh, training sessions for the people or not. So all these things have to be very, very carefully evaluated and especially when it comes to input, we assess the quality of the various training materials, methods and delivery. So, at this stage when we talk about the input, effective input is essential for engaging the learner. So, it will help us in engaging the learner well. It will help in uh, transfer of training and knowledge in an effective fashion and also the experienced trainers contribute to the success of the training program. They will be able to contribute to the success of the training program. So, these things have to be seen. Now, the third element of CIRO method is reaction. So, reaction refers to the response of an individual towards the training program. It includes assessing the perception of the individuals. It, it is something related to understanding the attitudes of the individuals. It has got something to do with understanding the satisfaction level, their engagement level, how they are performing, whether they would be uh, able to put it into practice or not. So, all these things are assessed at the stage of reaction only. So, this is the third important step in the levels of uh, CIRO method. I mean, this is a composite uh, framework called as CIRO method in which R stands for reaction. So, reaction is something related to measuring the impact of training in terms of the reactions and satisfaction with the training. So, positive reactions engage, uh, you know, positive reactions you know fuel up uh, the uh, trainers also and uh, their morale is also boosted to the perform a little better. So, positive reaction uh, would help in creating a very uh, engaging and uh, very engrossing and very relevant content to the in individuals. Next is outcomes. So, when we talk about outcomes, outcome refers to the results and impact of training on both individual learners and organization as a whole. So, did it bring about some kind of behavioral change in the individual or not? Did it, did it really help uh, an individual satisfy his objectives of attending the training program or not? And did it actually contribute to the overall uh, success of the organization or not? Or overall uh, organizational goals were met using the training program or not? All these things have to be very, very wisely uh, seen especially when it comes to the outcome. So, positive outcomes demonstrate that the training objectives were achieved and learners have successfully applied their knowledge, skills, ability learned during the training program and in effective manner in the real world settings. Now, in summary, this model provides a comprehensive overview of uh, the framework to analyze the training process in an effective manner. Now, we will just quickly talk about an organization, uh, we will quickly talk about the CIRO model uh, with some examples, with some relevant examples. Now, context wherein we talked about evaluating the organizational context and training needs. So, there was a retail company which was operating in a highly competitive market with changing customer expectations. So, there was a strong emphasis on providing exceptional customer service to differentiate the brand from the other counterparts. Now, the organizational culture promotes continuous learning and development and they are very pro towards giving the training to the individual. So, this is the context. So, this retail company is uh, trying to keep itself abreast with the changing market expectation and the customer expectation. So, this is about the context. Now, uh, when you talk about uh, the company has allocated several uh, resources for training and uh, also it includes a training budget, access to e-learning. This is the context, right? And when, we, when it comes to input, so the training program is designed to enhance the uh, experience for people to operate in a certain setting. Now, how was, it, how was it done? The curriculum was very well designed. It incorporated all the aspects and especially when it comes to curriculum, curriculum uh, incorporated basically a blend of instructional methods including the online courses. Online courses were used for the training. 
then role playing exercises were also there there were a lot of interactive workshops also so they used a blend of such kind of things they gave proper learning materials to the people including some manuals some videos some handouts and also some uh, other additional content experienced trainers were there uh, to facilitate the training to the individuals now participants in the training program you know after attending the training program their feedback was taken and they seemed to be a little positive about the things because of the reason that the kind of training uh, delivery which was given the training effectiveness that was made and uh, definitely these things were very well uh, related uh, to the individuals and they really find it very very interesting very engrossing and uh, highly contributing now the question which arises is uh, what reaction what was the uh, reason of it i mean how can they how could they trace out they conducted analysis on their employees and they could figure out that employee report came out to be highly positive in context of the reaction they were really satisfied their customer satisfaction survey is also improved as a consequence of training their employee engagement also improved as a consequence of training so a lot of things happened people got a better clarity and a better hold on uh, the lessons learned during the training program so this was about uh, the reaction and then we have uh, the outcome following the training program there's a noticeable there was a noticeable change in the outcome also in terms of the customer satisfaction scores so on and so forth now the next method that we're going to talk about is cipp model now what is the cipp evaluation model this model evaluates the training programs again at four levels that is c where c stands for context i stand for input p stands for process and p the other p stands for product now let's quickly have a look at what does it mean so context here assesses the context which we just talked about in the uh, ciro model also and need analysis before the implementing the training program so this particular context specifically talks about the need analysis that needs to be done wherein we'll try to do some kind of assessments of the uh, needs of the training uh maybe in context of the organizational analysis in terms of uh, some kind of task analysis and individual analysis also so after understanding the context the next level at which the evaluation would happen would be something related to the input now at this level we would just see and evaluate the quality of training resources and instructional design so there have to be different levels for understanding the quality of training resources whether people satisfied with the training resources or not whether it was sufficient enough to assimilate the the training uh, that was imparted or not and after that we have another level called as process so process has got something to do with analyzing the implementation and delivery of training and after that we have product which would measure the outcome and impact of training on performance and organizational goals so this is about cipp model now cipp model is again a method by means of which you can evaluate the training and we have already discussed so many methods there are few more and uh, especially uh, the one which i would like to talk about now is brinker hoff success case method it's a powerful approach which is used for measuring and evaluating the training effectiveness by identifying and analyzing the successful outcomes i'll just try to explain it with the help of an example imagine there's a manufacturing company implementing the safety and health practices and has a specifically designed and uh, you know tailored program for safety training purposes now the idea behind imparting these safety training pro uh, programs was to reduce the workplace accidents and injuries so the training program in all added a lot of modules uh, related to uh, some sessions which were given to them online to understand the compliances to understand how the uh, equipment handling has to be done and it was coupled with a lot of uh, you know modules on hazard uh, identification
and emergency response procedures. So, the very first step is to identify success cases where training has had a significant impact. So, here when they employ, employed such kind of things, employees who completed the training who were for example, let us talk about this uh, manufacturing example again. So, this organization tried to implement the right kind of training practices in place. They had very good training uh, programs designed for their employees. And they were very su successful in uh, implementing the program. And uh, when they evaluated the training uh, program, it also went really well because uh, the feedback was amazing, right? And it was actually able to bring about some kind of behavioral changes in the individuals on, uh, also. So, we need to identify some such kind of uh, success stories and we need to bring them before the people. For example, employees who completed the training program, they were able to proactively identify the potential hazards they followed safety protocols and also they were immediately responding to the emergency situation. Now, it is about investigating the factors that contributing to contributed to success. So, the training department conducted the interviews and observations to understand the various factors that are contributing to it. So, they were able to figure out the factors that effectively contributed towards this that the employees who were highly engaged in the training program had access to all necessary resources and they had tools also to implement safety measures. So, these were all successful participants. So, there were whole host of factors which were responsible for making the participants successful in terms of training. They were highly engaged, they were having all kinds of access to resources, they had access to all kinds of safety equipments also. So, all these things uh, in nutshell contributed towards the success of the organization and this is how you know success of the training program which was imparted. So, such kind of uh, investigation of the factors contributing to the success is also supposed to be done. And uh, then we have the next step which is called as disseminating the findings to improve future training initiatives. So, the training department shares the findings from the success cases with the key uh, stakeholders for example, the management, supervisors, frontline employees. They highlighted the critical success factors, identified and proposed recommendation for future training initiatives. These recommendation may come in different forms. For example, supervisors involvement and support because whenever such kind of training has to happen, a lot of support from the top management, a uh, lot of support from different levels of management has to happen. Then providing ongoing reinforcement is yet another thing that has to be taken care of. And definitely the refresher training would also help in uh, the same. So, by utilizing uh, Brinker, Brinker Hoff success case success method, we can really be benefited to a large extent. And then we have something called as return on expectation. So, unlike traditional ROI, ROE focuses on aligning the training outcomes with stakeholders expectations and strategic objectives. So, this thing happens uh, and it involves clarifying the stakeholders expectations and desired outcomes, assessing the extent to which training meets the expectations, linking the outcomes to organizational performance and values. Then we have uh, something called as balance scorecard which can be used as yet another method and uh, this balance scorecard framework measures training effectiveness by aligning the training objectives with certain key performance indicators and these key performance indicators can be the financial perspective, the customer service perspective, the internal processes and the learning and growth platforms. So, this is about the methods of evaluation and uh, with this I would just like to summarize uh, what 
we have done so far. So, today in this uh, session, we try to touch upon several aspects of evaluation. We touched upon several methods of evaluation such as some quantitative methods, some qualitative methods, uh, some important frameworks for training evaluation and effectiveness uh, assessments. For example, we talked about Kirk Patrick's mo model, we talked about Jack Phillips model, we talked about uh, Brinkerhoff's model, we talked about balance scorecard, we talked about ROE return on expectations, we talked about n number of such uh, things which can be really instrumental in understanding the concept of training evaluation in the best possible manner. Thank you.